Yeah, John, as far as the, uh, the, the tank itself, as far as things that you and I have been talking about, what are the results? What happens when uh, if this auto drain is not, is not working properly? Well, you'll find, first of all, that the cycle time will change because some of the internal volume of the tank is, is consumed by water. And ultimately, at some point where that water becomes so high that it starts to come into the downstream components, we'll have a serious issue. So the auto drain itself should be looked at as the compressor should be really on a daily basis. We'd be looking for the uh, drain line going to the floor drain or local drain to be wet, of course, because that's going to be operating all the time. And just looking for compressed air pressures on the receiver, listening for sounds, uh, smelling. If you've got belts that are burning or slipping, the motor uh, might hesitate to start the pump. So those kinds of visual checks are really prudent on a daily basis. Yeah, I think the, the compressor itself, like we talked about earlier on, is that it's, it's so important to make sure that you have this clean, dry, oil-free air. Don't take it for granted. The, the air that's coming out of this compressor is, is feeding a lot of uh, very expensive uh, pieces of equipment through, throughout the whole building. So from, a, from if any of the people that are on the, the line today, if you're, consult, uh, if you're a facility engineer, uh, to make sure that these things, like John was saying, are done on a daily basis, because the, the cost of not doing these checks and doing maintenance and or replacing this compressor if it goes bad with something that's not as, as quality uh, is that you could be feeding water or oil into all these very expensive uh, pieces of uh, pneumatic equipment, thermostats, and controllers. So we're going to move now on to the refrigerated air dryer, which is this uh, section here. And even though in our section we don't have uh, a, a drain coming off the refrigerated air dryer, there is still uh, a drain that's there. And the, the general, in general, the, the air dryer cools this uh, tank air that's coming off of that big compressor and tank, and it's there to remove the moisture uh, that's coming through that, that air line. And then to be able to do that, how do you check it? Well, you're going to be able to look at the, at the drain, again, similar to what John was talking about for the compressor, and make sure that there is a drain and it is having moisture coming down uh, in general. So again, do that on a daily basis. Then in also the discharge of this refrigerated air dryer uh, should have the piping temperature around the 38 to 40 degrees. So somebody can take their hand, or you can take a uh, uh, just feel it and take or take a infrared uh, thermometer and check to see what the temperature is on that discharge to know that it's cool and it is working. And, and also in this particular case, we have a a brand here uh, that's uh, Hankinson, which is a pretty popular brand name. It's out, and in the Hankinson, you're going to have a power on. Uh, light that's going to be working, and you should be checking that. And also, there also will be a light uh, on these Hankinson and perhaps other brands as well that would have a high temperature warning light saying that there's a, a problem inside. So this is just basically like a, a window air conditioner that's cooling down the air and cooling it down so it drags the uh, and pulls moisture out of the air and brings it to the drain. Now the maintenance part of this is uh, is fairly simple. It's, uh, cleaning the coils on a regular basis, making sure that they have a free flow of air across them so it can do its job. And then making sure that the drain line is open, it's not clogged up with any dirt or dust and those kinds of things going to the drain. And then one of, one of the comments that we get, John and I have talked about this a couple of times as far as, you know, what happens if this air line is actually being run outside? You might have rooftop units that require uh, pneumatic air. And so right now we're, we're cooling this air down to this 38 to 40 degrees and therefore removing the moisture of that. But if you actually run this air line outside, you could have minus 10 degrees, or at least we do here in Milwaukee. Uh, and if you have that cold air, you still are going to have moisture, even though it's cooled down to 38 or 40, you're still going to have moisture in there. And that minus 10 degree air could actually block the air lines going on the roof. So you have to be very careful and cautious. And one of the uh, solutions to doing that in addition to perhaps a refrigerated air dryer, is to actually use a, uh, an industrial type desiccant dryer, which actually, actually will pull more moisture out of it and really drop and take the moisture out so you can run those air lines on the roof and not experience any freezing conditions. So one of the last pieces I wanted to mention is that some people uh, don't think about it, is that that compressor and the tank actually is the first stage of, of taking and drying the air. So as the air moisture that's in the mechanical room, it's there, yes, you have moisture there. 
And, but what happens is when you compress that air, the compressed air in the tank can't hold the moisture, and it drops down to the bottom of the tank. And therefore, dropping and pumping it up to 80 to 100 pounds uh, actually starts the first part of that air drying, and that's where the moisture comes down, and that auto drain is, is so important. So it's really very easy to forget this type of equipment because it's quite often in a part of the building that doesn't get visited often, but its, it's emphasis can't be overstated. Uh, as a matter of testing from time to time to prove that this equipment is working, one can actually take any branch air line and use a white piece of cloth perhaps or something uh, fiber to allow a certain amount of air to pass and look for spots that might be oily or you might be able to even see air if you look at the free end of a piece of poly tubing. Uh, these kinds of things are indications that you probably should spend some time in the equipment room looking at the dryer, the filters, the compressor, those types of things. The uh, filters quite often that are out in the system that aren't depicted on this slide, but you will commonly find that, uh, see, I've got to get the air mouse here, that branch air from the regulator that goes into serving the entire building main will be further subdivided. It'll serve commonly many pieces of control equipment. There will oftentimes be small filters in line with the uh, receiver controllers, switching relays, the kinds of things we'll talk about later. Those filters will change color when they get oily. And if you just do a spot check on that periodically, look for color changes there. That can be an indication that those very fine aerosols are, are making it through the supply system and uh, ending up at the final control devices. Uh, and again, as Carl had said before, what we're looking at is a very small part of the system, but it has a great influence on the quality of the entire building control, as well as the cost of maintenance and ownership. With that air clean and dry, particulate free again, we're going to have much longer life at the final control devices. And we'll learn this later, but the thermostats and a lot of relays and such have very small orifices that can be very quickly fouled with just fine particles or oil. So again, can't be overstated. There are means to clean systems like this if they've become contaminated. They uh, typically involve breaking the system down into pieces, isolating, and flushing. There's uh, products from New Calgon, for example, that allow a injection of a solvent into the airstream, typically after all your final devices have been removed from the airlines. We don't want to flush the dirt through these fine orifices within thermostats and such. That's something that's covered in their product literature, but should systems get out of hand, there is some hope. You don't have to open walls up and tear piping out. It can be flushed in place. But again, we have to look at that on a, on a building per building basis, depending again on how foul it is and, and how the whole system's been put together. We're just going to advance the slides now, and we're going to take a little bit stronger uh, look at and a more detailed look at this uh, pressure reducing valve. So bear with me here as I advance the slides. Here we go. Hopefully the uh, slides are coming up, and you should be seeing a top called a single pressure reducing valve, or PRV. So the main air that's coming in from the air dryer from the tank is this is the air dryer and this is the tank pressure. Uh, as John was saying, 80 to 100 pounds. Uh, and that's just in general. You'll probably find the PSIs uh, for the tank pressures in, in different locations all over the map. But the pressure reducing valve uh, is, uh, has, in addition to the PRV, it has this micron, submicron filter. And I'm trying to bring up my, there we go, the pointer. So the air is coming in this direction, and we have a glass bowl that can be seen here and see any accumulation of water and any accumulation of dirt or oil. And there is also a drain at the bottom here to be able to take any of those moistures or oils out of that uh, globe, uh, glass globe.